Hello guys, welcome all of you. We do have a lovely panel right now with gamers and brands and agencies. Uh, what gaming means to brands and gamers, right? So I would like to open this question for all of us. I mean, we'll start with uh, Ankit Pan. What gaming means to you? Can you just briefly explain us? Uh, to me, gaming means everything. Uh, I've, whatever I've built, I've built from uh, gaming only. I started uh, when I was 15 years old and since then I've been playing games. It was FPS, uh, CS 1.6 to CS GO, uh, then Valorant now and hopefully in the future CS 2. Adi? So gaming basically it means uh, a package of entertainment so that I could provide entertainment to my audience. That could be a great choice to be a gamer and to, you know, just to entertain your audience and make some connection with them. That's it. Prashant, what game Hi guys, so uh, probably I'm the only millennial in this uh, entire group. Oh, I've got one more over there. Hi. So a very different answer. Whilst most of the people over here are creating content and earning a livelihood out of gaming, gaming for me, I would say, is from two perspectives. One is very personal because I was a very lonely person. I was the only child, right? And gaming kind of helped me develop a lot of skill sets and uh, pastime. So I would say gaming for me is a very personal thing wherein it allows me to be very uh, therapeutic. It allows me to explore creativity. It allows me to become curious because a lot of games that I play are uh, a lot into history, a lot into cultures, story-driven narratives as we call them. So gaming, uh, that perspective, allows me to develop myself a little more than who I am. Sorry for my voice, I've been very ill. Uh, the other thing with respect to as a brand manager or a brand marketer, gaming really allows me to connect with audiences in a very unique way because at the end of the day, marketing is all about aggregation of consumers and gaming community is such that it really allows you to establish communities and connections which go far beyond just a normal campaign or just advertising. So that's, that's my perspective on gaming. Very lovely answer coming from Prashant. Now I would like to ask Saloni, what does gaming mean to you? Uh, gaming for me is just lifestyle, like uh, it's a escapism. I'm an introvert person, so for me, gaming makes me explore myself more and my personality. So yeah, it just helped me with my lifestyle. That's great. Ronnie? Hi. Hi. You are late to the party. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry for being late, guys. <laughs> what does gaming mean to you? Uh, gaming, at mean, to me, gaming means an escape. To me, it's an escape from all the realities. When I have a problem in life, I don't understand what to do. I play games. I play games, 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 I play games. It's an escape for me. Again, that's a very unique answer. Escapism. What does gaming mean to you, Raj? Or Hello, everyone. Uh, so, mainly gaming, bachpan se, I'm playing games. Mainly a hobby tha game khelna. Jaise main school se aata tha, college se aata tha. Do tin gante game khel liya, kaam kar liya, end the day with peace, mm khel ke. So, it started with a hobby. And wo hobby profession mein maine convert kar liya. It's my passion now. I earn karta gaming, se, apna ghar, jo bhi hai, my family support karta, uh, with financial uh, helps and all. So, I turned my hobby into passion. It's everything for me. Uh, the pura, pura din, gaming, 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 gaming. So, now we can say that, khelo'ge, kutoge, to banoge, nawab. What does gaming mean to you, George? I mean, yeah, I think, you do have any personal connect with gaming or just a professional connect? No, no, I did have a personal, deep personal attachment to games. Drove my parents absolutely nuts because I was stuck onto gaming and consoles all my life. I mean, I wish they were here to see where it landed me finally, but yeah, that's what it is. But it started off as casual uh, gaming to, to escape stuff and, you know, express myself. Now it's ended up as a revenue stream. So I'm thankful for it. So I think that's a lovely answer to this question by all of us. Specifically, everybody has a personal connect to the gaming. And specifically for me, I mean these gamers are giving me a livelihood. I'm being paid by them. So now I would like to have this open question for all the gamers, right? And I would like to start with Adi. 
what are the key attributes that you think help become a successful gaming influencer so i mean and also just talk about a gamer and a gaming influencer how does it uh, how do how do you manage both of the lives so uh I started back in 2010. I started my channel in 2010. I've been uploading uh, since 2010 to 2016. So that time I was only a gamer, not an influencer. I was only playing, uploading stuffs and uploading videos and all. 2016 to 2000 uh, till now I'm, I've been streaming. And I guess influencer, influencer part was activated in 2017 or something, right? So uh, to be honest, being a gamer or influencer is kind of a two different thing, but if you learn both of them, that would be really helpful for you to, uh, you know, be a influencer gamer kind of thing. So I guess uh, it's just a 50-50% and you just have to make a balance. That's it. You play games, you entertain your audience and you do some ads in that. So we call it an influencer activity. And I think that's it. That's not a, a big deal. It's very easy for a gamer. So nowadays gamers are becoming key, influ key opinion leaders also. That's a very big thing nowadays, right? Again, Saloni, would you like to take this question? Yeah. I mean, if you talk about the attribute, if you are an influencer, either be a gamer influencer or a regular lifestyle influencer, you've got to be very candid. If you can't be candid, you can't fake for long. So the more you are candid, the more we will people relate to you and the more the audience you'll get if your personality is that charming to get that kind of audience that's an attribute for me so i think on this panel we have seen we have seen ankit pan i mean competing in esports tournaments from being a red bull athlete also right and we see that he has played a lot of tournaments and he's very active on youtube so ankit what do you think what are the key attributes you think to be a successful gamer so uh, when i when you say gamer i take it as i am an esports athlete so i'll give you that perspective sure. uh, competing is everything for an athlete and uh, when i started uh, i think uh, uh, i saw that you can represent india in this field so you know that kind of motivated me and the key attributes would be you have to be patient, you have to you know work hard and be consistent in this field. Only then uh, you know you will get results because the competition is very tough and the scene in India especially is booming now. There are a lot of tournaments coming, a lot of investments are being made in gaming. So I think uh, you should be patient and uh, keep working hard, and eventually you will you know be there. So that's great. We have seen, I mean, through our gamers, we have heard that gaming brings passion, consistency, sincerity. They're also making a life out of it. Now I will move to Prashant. Prashant, what does gaming mean to you? How do you anticipate the gaming industry and esports evolving in the next five to 10 years? What is your brand planning to adopt and grow? Okay, so that's a very loaded question. I know. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's gaming in the next five to 10 years, if we retrospectively look at gaming, what it has reached today, I mean, we, n we never thought that photorealism is a word that we would be talking about on stages like these. And that's all because of ray tracing. Ray tracing is nothing but ensuring that the shadows and the light falls is correct in a gaming frame. Okay, in a frame. So when you look at CGI of Hollywood, you consider it to be very realistic. That's what gaming has reached today, wherein, I mean, a session some time ago was all about meta humans, wherein an Unreal Engine, which is a gaming technology, allows people to be very realistic in their form and format. And it will be very difficult for audiences like you and me to really identify whether it's reality or whether it's virtual. So that is what it has reached today. So if you're talking about five to 10 years, a couple of trends which I definitely see happening is one, uh, there would be no limitation of hardware. What I mean by that is today there are exclusive gaming content and games either for the Xbox or for the PlayStation 5 or for the PC. That limitation is no longer going to be there because hardware is going to be agnostic and with recently Apple launching the Vision Pro, we can clearly see that the way we look at AR, MR, VR, XR, right, it's, it's all blurred now. So one of the trends is there will not be hardware limitations. It will be very accessible. Another anthropological thing that I'm seeing is when we look at our parents, right, including mine, 
uh, they did not understand gaming too much. But now we have parents who are gamers themselves. And we have people who are going to come into the industry who are digital natives and gamers themselves. So now gaming is no longer something which we used to call very proudly that we are nerds and hence we are gamers, but it's mainstream and mass. So suddenly you will see gaming not only being that elusive 15 to 25, but you will talk about gaming, gaming content, audiences who are in their mid 30s, mid 40s, maybe even 50s as well. So 10 years from today, uh, wow, I will be in my 40s, right? And I will be one of the gamers who people would want, brands like me, would want to engage with and gaming companies would want to create content for. So hardware agnostic, uh, a larger pool of audiences which connects with gaming and our gamers themselves. And lastly, what I see is this entire mechanic which is free to play, which is on mobile, which is all about gacha and psychology wherein they extract money out of people so that you get a dopamine rush and that becomes frequency so that you keep doing it again and again. That will probably go away because suddenly you have a bigger audience pool available who is ready to give you revenue and hence you do not need to resort to these kind of mechanisms. So all these loot boxes or all these cosmetic things that you need to buy with real money, that would reduce a lot because frankly as a gamer and I do not know whether you will agree with it, I cannot stand those games. If I have paid you a retail price for any game, give me the full experience, don't ask money again and again. And that's why the AAA industry will have to change focus towards gamers. So that's a great insight guys. I mean gaming has no age barrier and now we know his age also. So moving on to George, what is your take on gaming as a more immersive and engaging platform for marketing compared to traditional digital and social media platforms? Yeah, so super question. I th I'll split that into two parts. I'll start with uh, my take on gamers and then go into my take on gaming platforms. I see gamers as three categories of gamers. Uh, one is the serious pro ca category gamers like we have on stage. Second is the casual gamers and the third is the, you know, uh, absolute novices and the spectators part of it, okay? All three are, sorry, the third part I would take as creators, basically. Yeah, so uh, uh, the first part, uh, the first type of gamers can become influencers and opinion leaders and brands can use them to be spokespersons or influencers or whatever. The second category of gamers who are the casual gamers are the target audience, basically. And you're talking about almost 500 million people in India at the moment who play casual games, over 500 million people. So each one of them becomes a target audience and they are the followers of all the influencers. Creators, of course, can become partners with brands to create content, create games or, and anything in the environment. As far as the platform goes, I think it's one of the fastest growing, I think you've heard this all morning and afternoon, it's the fastest growing uh, platform at the moment. Uh, I think what you get with that is fantastic opinion leaders and a very dedicated community and followers. I think you will not find a more dedicated community as you will find the gaming community. They are addictive, they come every day, they follow their leaders, they follow, follow their, uh, you know, their celeb gamers everywhere that they go and they hang on to every word that they say. You know, so if you have uh, celebrity gamers say something that will be followed. I can guarantee you that. So that, and if you are targeting anything to a, to the Gen Z, I think you can't afford to uh, lose out on the gaming platform or on gamers. Also, I think uh, I think Prashant touched upon it, and I just want to add to it. Uh, today, I think uh, you consider gaming as a subculture, but I think to a someone who's uh, in that age group and in the Gen Z, it is mainstream. So I think we got to start expect, accepting that and move on to it like that. And uh, I think from purely from an agency standpoint and a creative standpoint, I would say that we are moving on from the traditional forms of advertising to creating experiences. And the more brands uh, embrace that and then they are moving towards creating experiences, uh, I think gaming and gaming platforms and gamers will play a very important role. 
So, George, you just mentioned about the immersive and experiential marketing, right? Prashant, we were just having a chat about your strategies evolving AR, right, for, to promote Burger King as a brand. So, can you just uh, like talk more about it? Sure. So, uh, before I go into what Burger King has been doing with respect to gaming campaigns, I think uh, what George said about immersive experiences, I think uh, one example that comes to my head is Fortnite live events. And Fortnite live events really revolutionized the entire way a game can become a social platform. So right from Scott Travis concert, which was viewed by 12 million people plus live at the same time, to it revamping itself with uh, the entire Galactus live event or something, what, what is happening is games are becoming more social in nature. Whilst there's a competitive angle to it, I'm talking about casual gaming, please do not hate me professional gamers, right? But, but what's happening there is whilst there is a gameplay mechanic and whilst there is a lot of competitiveness, a game like Fortnite differentiates itself by becoming the experiential game. And it all, there was an uh, Ariana Grande concert as well. There was Marshmallow, right? And what Fortnite became was this live experience in a metaverse and I can see Neeraj standing there, right? And it's a very pr primitive metaverse of sort which started four or five years ago, but there were people together watching something. And, and that is what I'm decoding, what George is saying that there needs to be more and more experiential events which brands can partner with. And now coming to the Burger King story, uh, two examples I'll give very quickly. One was something we did right at the end of the pandemic wherein there was an augmented reality filter created on Instagram, which flame grilled anything that you guys could not achieve during the pandemic. And we gave whoppers in return. Now, the insight was very clear that we all had plans, but the plans did not materialize. And here was one brand which said that, you know what, I know your plans have failed, but guess what, I have a whopper for you. And, and my engagement, and again, the, the KPI is engagement, right? I mean, that's the only KPI we take because everything else is controlled by the input of money that you put behind a campaign. And the engagements were almost two to three X of the industry. And that really helped us to go for the next big campaign which we did, which was the IPL. What we did was something called the greatest hack, wherein we created a, a filter on a third party page, which you could point at the camera. And whilst the game was live on, depending on the situation of the game, in every ball you could collect certain coupons. Now again, these coupons were also gamified, wherein they would pop up in your screen and you have to click on it and then it would be banked to you. And right from a no ball to a wicket to a four to a six to a 50 or a hundred or say even a ball which is not hit right everything allowed you to customize and collect different kind of coupons and one number that stands out for me was we had 50,000 game plays in the period of that IPL and this was the shorter IPL the IPL which happened pre-pandemic and then there were certain days allocated during, I think, November, December, somewhere around that time. And that really gave us confidence that content which is A, gamified, and content which brings the brand out and allows people to really engage with it works. So again, 50,000 gameplays in a matter of 20 days, a great story for the brand. It really worked for our app as well. But these are the kind of things that the brand has taken in terms of gaming. Uh, very niche steps right now, very early stages. But as George said, the more immersive experiences we have, more brands would want to get into games and partner with the professionals to create good stories and engagements with consumers. I mean, lovely steps you are taking for your brand. Otherwise, I mean, we love your burgers. Thank you. Me <laughs> Yeah. So, I would like to talk to Ankit. As you are a Red Bull athlete, what, uh, as you are a Red Bull athlete, want to understand what is your experience in being one? Um, my experience has been great. Uh, when uh, I got to know that, you know, I, I was being uh, signed by Red Bull, my only idea uh, was to, you know, grow the gaming culture in our country. Because when I started, when the talks were happening, gaming was not that big back then. So I wanted to, you know, change it from the grassroots and uh, that's where Red Bull helped me. We uh, started with the Red Bull uh, Flick, which was a CS event. Then we came up with the Red Bull Campus Clutch, which is a Valorant event. And then we started with Red Bull MEO, which is for all mobile gamers. So we tried to, you know, cater all the uh, gamers in the country and gave them a platform to, you know, showcase their skills so that, you know, they can also live their dream of uh, being an esports athlete or maybe a content creator, give them that experience, give them the stage. 
So my experience has been great and I'm really happy to be a Red Bull athlete. That's wonderful. So Aditya, this one I want to take with you. Yeah. As you are in, as you are engaging with brands more often, what is your take on the imp importance of creative freedom given to you as a creator to create your own campaigns with the brands and your fan base? And, and what? Fan base. Fan base, okay. So in the last session we were talking about this thing only, creative freedom. I am sure a lot of have heard about it as well. So I think creative freedom should be given to like throughout all the brands and to all the creators because then you know uh, what kind of content and, and how it's going to be merged with your uh, influencer activities as well because as a creator I know what my audience are capable of uh, absorbing that content and, and when I'm going to put that ad or influencer activity over the content period. So I think creator freedom should be, uh, should be the first topic before engaging into any activities and so that you know the creator should know like what thoughts could be possible to, to get the ads which, uh, to be placed in the video as well. That's great. Snacks, as you were an esports athlete and now you have made a transition to becoming a gaming content creator, can you share your insights from both the worlds and why you made this transition? So, 2018 I started my journey as an esports player. So, I used to play 12 hours the game daily, 12 hours fixed time, play tournaments, uh, practice for uh, the tournaments, represent India at an international level. So, that was my focus for constant two years. Then I started uh, streaming. Two years I just uploaded VODs on YouTube. So, people got to know only Snacks. My in-game name, my YouTube channel name is Snacks. People used to only know me as Snacks. So, when I put videos, the public knew that this is showing its gameplay, the uh, tournament gameplay, how it plays, what it plays, what it plays. वो सभी सीखते थे पब्लिक। Then I started uh, to give time to streaming। मैं दिन में 12 घंटे खेलता था, उसका दो घंटे में निकाल के आया इस स्ट्रीम यूट्यूब पे। वहाँ पे जिस तरीके से मैं स्ट्रीम कर रहा था, uh, I was just being myself and पब्लिक को बहुत ज़्यादा पसंद आया। uh, मेरा एक्सेंट, uh, मैं जिस तरीके से स्ट्रीम पे खुद को ऐसा डिस्प्ले करता था, पब्लिक को बहुत ज़्यादा एंगेजिंग when the game ban was recently, I played four years of continuous esports. In the last 10 months, I'm off esports because the game ban was banned for which I played for BGMI. So for 10 months, I had a lot of time because I didn't play for 10-12 hours. I had 4 hours of streaming in the day, but the rest of the time I had to fully utilize it to explore. I had challenges videos, vlogs, my lifestyle, a day in my life, I started to tell people about these things and the public liked it. And I utilized it completely for 10 months gain more audience, to engage with people, uh, to engage with the followers who follow me for a reason. Uh, many people follow me for gameplay today. Many people follow me for my accent, for my entertainment, for my lifestyle. Uh, the things I manage completely the day. They learn from it and I like to display it myself. And people like to see me and I like to see it. Actually. So, this sudden switch, starting I was very confident tha, to vlog in front of so many people. But when I started getting the response, the public gave me a response, yeah, that made me confident. And uh, I was just being myself, camera ho, na ho. I was just off camera, I was on camera, the public was very liked. So, this is my journey from an esports player to a content creator. But I will be managing both since the game is back. So, I will manage both, the public will entertain, we will play, we will enjoy. Thank you. So, we have seen some famous dialogues that you always Yep. Say on stream. Can you just replicate okay. some of them? Both of us will not understand. Those who play BGM and PUBG will not understand. So, I have 3-4 slangs in Hyderabad. When I was talking about the stream, the public pointed out that it was very fun. In the starting, I was a troll in my accent, but later, the public liked that. And it was a little viral. So, there are 3-4 slangs that I used in the game. So, one is, Dejigal, Dejigal, Dejigal. So, one is, Damage Zone in the middle of the game. Zahir Bas, Sana Na 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 Spray, Koma Spray. So, these are all my Hyderabad words. So, I used to use it in my gameplay. There was a lot of public accent. There was a lot of people who liked it. They were like, stream it, see how you talk on a regular basis, how you talk and how you entertain. So, the public liked it and we were delivering it. Everyone was happy to see it. With slangs, I think. With slangs, even Dynamo has some slangs, right? I think we should... Puts that shot. 
now i'll be taking now i'll be moving to roni roni what drew you to gaming in the first place how has it impacted your life can you share a very memorable gaming experience with us uh, um, i've been a gamer my whole life like bachpan se games khel raha hu um gaming has like done a lot for my life of course like a, a lot of things has happened in my life with gaming so uh, an impactful moment yaar aise aise ek exactly moment to nahi but bahut sare like i remember one moment so this was back in 2018 when just pubg mobile came out so i used to stream i would be streaming 3 hours 4 hours back then and wo time pe pubg pc tha and cs go sare game hote the so a very impactful day in my life i'll say is one day i decided to try out this new game that just came out 2 3 days ago called pubg mobile that game was new people had no idea ki ye mobile mein kaise chalega i had no idea because if you played pubg pc back in 2017 it was horrible even on a good pc it's horrible so imagine on a mobile phone so that day i played pubg mobile for the first time and i used to get around uh, 20 30k views on my average live stream and that day it went to around 200k views and i was i, I remember i ended the stream and i was thinking to myself ki ye kya ho raha hai <laughs> what is this thing what is this game and i think it just got on people liked the game people enjoyed the game and uh, here we are 6 years later i mean yeah that's a long time so i would like to go to saloni now saloni you have said in some of your videos that let's remove female from the female gamers right can you briefly help us with your thought behind the saying i mean i have said let's remove girl from the girl gamer because i never specify or pronounce myself as a girl gamer unless it's a trending hashtag on instagram just kidding uh, so like I've always been a gamer my life. Uh, I've, I've, I'm born that, like I, I, I'm born as a girl. That doesn't mean I, people will specify me as a girl gamer. So I don't like the fact that uh, if it's a boy, people call, don't like specify them as a boy. Hey, he's a boy gamer. Why girls? We are just a gamer. And I believe for, for becoming a gamer, you require skills, not gender. So I <laughs> thank you. so i work on my skills and i work on my personality because i am an influencer i am mean content creator as well so that's what i believe and that's what i tell people not to call me or pronounce me as a girl gamer that's Thank great you. i think prashant you what to so uh, saruni what a well answered question i mean uh, the part that there is a girl gamer it's sad because there's no classification but what i want to bring into perspective is characters for example i have played as aloy Horizon, to get forbidden west or Horizon Zero Dawn. I have played as Ellie. Ellie is Last of Us, right? What is happening is even in the gaming mainstream, the the character, some of the best characters in gaming today are women, right? And when you play them, you completely immerse yourself. If you look at most of the games coming in today, they have a character creation. For example, Cyberpunk. I don't know whether you have heard of Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, Keanu Reeves was in it. Okay, that's the claim to fame for that game. But CD Projekt R was the first. a uh, game which allowed you to be a trans character in the game itself so i'm 100% in sync with you that this conversation of a gender whether as a player or as a character in the game itself is now blurring and at the end of the day whether it's a character or you you're just a gamer yeah doing the game so more power to you for that yeah thank you so through this panel we have seen that gaming is more than age and gaming is above than gender right so inclusivity and diversity gaming is one genre that caters to so uh, these were the questions that i wanted to ask my panelists now i am uh, now we want to have some questions from the audiences right if you guys have any questions do free to ask them any questions okay thank you and that's the that's the panel for you guys thank you